but if she needs to be tough or deal with a certain stressful situation, she can, but the longer she does it, the more it will mentally drain her and to be able to keep up with that, she will have to go and step into more of a masculine core. Hey guys, you know what beat yourself up? Now this video topic will be about toughness. Is it for men or women? Now before we get into the video though, go check out DrewYourselfUp.com I make blog posts on a weekly basis on content and coverage channel from health, fitness, dating, and pharmacology. You name it, I cover it, topics here for men, mostly. Now, let's get into the video. So, toughness. I've been wanting to make this video for a while now, and I've been procrastinating it a bit. Point being, this video is for those who have a hard time figuring out how this whole femininity and masculinity thing works in terms of toughness. Now see, toughness is a predominantly masculine thing. However, you can be a masculine person or a feminine person and still be tough. The only difference is how long are you being tough? See, the longer you're being tough means you're being stressed out, having to be fierce, focused, determined, you're suffering, which creates trauma. The more you go through that, the more you go into a masculine frame. And women can do this. Men, women, gay, bi, straight, whatever. Let's use an example of a feminine woman. A feminine woman could be feminine, but if she needs to be tough or deal with a certain stressful situation, she can, but the longer she does it, the more it will mentally drain her and to be able to keep up with that, she will have to go and step into more of a masculine core. Her feminine core will be handling the toughness situation her way, but the longer she does it, the more her feminine way of doing it will change it to a masculine way of doing it because it's most, it's most efficient. And the longer she does it, handling the situation that requires toughness will go and bleed into her feminine core. You can use this pretty much for like anything. A man who's doing a feminine art or taking care of the kids. Now, if you're not very conscious on how you do this, you can fall into the trap of affecting your core traits. Now, if you're a masculine man who's known for being a risk taker, tough, risk taker and tough, stressed out, determined, argumentative, if you take the role of being a parent and your wife decides to be working and you decide to be and you decide to be the stay-at-home parent, what's gonna happen is, if you're not very conscious, and even then it's pretty hard, you will start adapting feminine qualities because taking care of kids is more of a feminine thing. Mentoring and educating and watching over your kids is a masculine thing, but when you're forced as a man who's masculine to go and take care of the kids in a nurturing position, which is a feminine activity, your masculine core will do it in a masculine way but the most efficient way is to do it in a feminine way. So eventually you start doing it in a feminine way that will go and bleed into your masculine core. You see this a lot, especially in women who are into business. They start off feminine, docile, less competitive, but business is very straightforward. You have to be direct, combative, you need to be specific, you need to know what you want, you need to go for it, you need to be stressed out, you need to be in constant stress in tough situations. In decisive calls, quick. You need to have it your way, you need to be confident, you need to be pushing constantly those are very those are very masculine things and women who are like that feminine will end up turning masculine and the problem is a lot of women don't know how to separate work from their dating life so that masculine energy that they have that they need to be performing at work when you come back home they're still like that so what happens is a woman who's feminine gets into business become more masculine and then next thing you know there are more problems occurring in the relationship because she's acting more like a dude when she comes home to her boyfriend or to her husband she she is acting more like a dude and a lot of people don't notice that men don't notice it women don't notice it the activity you're doing and how you're doing it matters what matters more is how long you are doing it you can be a masculine man and still do certain feminine things from art, painting, or nurturing an elderly or a child or whatever the fuck. But the longer you do it, if you're not conscious on how you're doing it, 
you will end up adapting the best qualities to make or do certain activities. And if you're a masculine man doing a feminine activity for too long, without any external or other activities that are masculine, you will start becoming more feminine internally because you are performing a feminine activity more often. It's like if all you do is paint a new pottery, you have no, you don't work out, you don't do any other physical competitive activities, you just do docile artistic feminine activities, it will affect your personality, definitely. We are our, we are who we choose to be, but also what we do, our environments, our activities. Because if you want to be a feminine woman, but you're doing masculine things, it's not going to work out for you. Especially if you're doing it a long term. Because see, women are feminine, they get more traumatized a lot easier than men. Oh, hell yeah. There's a reason why women don't approach men to begin with. Their egos are, are very, very fragile. That's why the confidence requirement is always present in men. Women can be insecure. As men, we don't mind, we expect it, it's fine, we don't, it doesn't bother us. But as men, you cannot be insecure. Women expect you to be confident. That's why they find it attractive. That's why they find you attractive. You have to know what you're doing, how you're doing it, and what you want. If you want to be, if you want to be a masculine man, do masculine activities. You can be feminine, it's okay. You can be 80% masculine, 20% feminine. There is no such thing as being fully feminine or fully masculine. That is a ego trick. You're not 100% masculine. If you were, you wouldn't be able to be smooth. You wouldn't be able to grab a woman and caress her delicately. Because being delicate is a feminine thing. Being rough is a masculine thing. There is no such thing as being fully 100% masculine or fully 100% feminine. If that is the case, you will not be able to function in the world. And see, toughness is for both genders, but it is best for men because women get traumatized easier. And when their cores are changed for masculine, it's very hard, especially extremely harder for a woman to change her masculine core into a feminine core. Very hard to do because it's traumatic and not to mention, when a woman is, needs to be pushed into becoming masculine, usually it's a case of survival needs. And when that happens, it's very hard to reverse that. There's a reason why women who go in become tough do it out of survival needs. If a woman cannot become tough and masculine, she wouldn't be able to survive in case her man got sick, got hurt, died, or left her. If a, if a woman's financial support is her husband and he dies and she's left alone, she's become tough, she's become masculine to handle that stress and burden. Her feminine cores are changing to a masculine core because to handle the such burden is a masculine thing. It's a natural thing. However, it's not good for her in terms of dating, in terms of long-term happiness, always be stressed out. For men, we enjoy it. Therapy, for example, is more of a feminine thing. Most men avoid therapy because most therapy approaches are not designed to help the male brain deal with pain or find solutions. That makes men believe therapy is worthless. Male depression is usually based on feeling helpless, powerless, and unable to affect one's life or environment. Therapy models focus on helping men feel heard and loved instead of restoring their sense of personal power. Men need solutions, not just feelings. Absolutely, and we are churning out here in the United States an overwhelming number of therapists who do not have the skills that they need or the experience that they need to provide lasting solutions that will undiagnose you in the long term. When you get a man into that system, men would rather kill themselves than sit there and say, I am disabled. I must have a medical assistance for the rest of my life. And all I can do is sit here and talk about my feelings endlessly for the next 10 years while paying $10,000 for the privilege. Men are looking for solutions and they're looking for guidance in how to apply those solutions. When you give them those things, men will do just about anything for you. A man's value for what he can do and what he can bring. The best way to make a man feel better and get out of his depression state is to inspire him, have him work towards something. There was a story of depressive men who, well, they saw an incident happen and they went and tackled it. These depressive men who, who were debilitated for most of their lives, who were depressed, probably suicidal, got up and went and did something useful. To help people, to protect people. I think it was like a fire incident or a fireman or something like that, where they didn't have enough people. And these men just got together and went and helped out. That right there is a sign of men's therapy is being useful, doing things and taking action, not talking about your feelings, not feeling pity, not feeling love and accepted, because love and accepted 
is a predominantly child and woman thing only. Sure, you can be a love and accepted if you're still being a certain degree useful because no one wants to feel useless, especially a man. We all notice it's like when you're a young kid and you have a single mom or a parent or you're just outside of your mom and you're a kid. You know you're weak, you know you can't help, you know you don't know shit. Therefore, when you're around strangers, especially men, you feel like you're surrounded by wolves because you cannot do anything, you know, if something were to happen. When it comes down to it, you can't protect your mom, you can't protect the house, you can't protect your your uh, siblings or your dog, or whatever the fuck. You're just a weak little kid and you know that. As a boy, you know that when you're young and you're around strangers that are men that are fucking full grown fatties or muscular dudes or whatever the hell. You know what I'm talking about if you had a single mom and she brought people over or you're outside with her in like a shopping center. That same thing has to do with men for the rest of our lives. If we don't feel useful or capable, then we feel like shit. Then we spiral into depression. So toughness is a two-way street. However, it's fitting for a man, not for a woman. Let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to like, share, comment, subscribe. Follow me on IG, Rumble, Reddit, DrewYourselfUp.com. With that being said though, thank you, chosen wisely. Drew yourself out.